Thoughts on Nomadland? Um, it's on my Disney Plus watch list. I just can't shake the feeling that I'm not going to like it. So I will get to it at some point. First, I got to get through great expectations <laughs> for some reason. Um, what else is on there? I think I've got Dodgeball, the true underdog story. I'm working my way through all of the greatest movies that Fox Searchlight ever put out before they got bought by Disney and then rolled into Canadian Disney+. Plus. You know, I, was re I, I felt like I was going insane reading a Reddit thread the other day that was like, it, it's the 353rd thousandth time this posted. This was posted, I should say. Um, and uh, it was like, I think The Other Guys is one of the most underrated comedies of all time. And everyone was like, I agree. Um, but also that's the take that's been echoed on the website for literally the last decade. It's a, it's a funny movie. It's rated. It's rated well. It's probably like of the Will Ferrell movies that are purposefully dumb, it's probably his best. Somebody, they had like the third highest comment or something like that. And it was, um, I, when I first saw it, I didn't really like it that much. But now I put it up there with movies like Anchorman and the, uh, not Napoleon Dynamite, with Anchorman and Dodgeball. And I was like, listen. I'm 35, I was 16 when those movies came out, I saw them in theaters, I quoted them to death, we cannot let this be our legacy, millennials, we cannot be like, favorite movie of all time, yeah, I'm gonna have to say The Dark Knight, but if we're talking comedies, the one where Vince Vaughn forms a dodgeball team and Ben Stiller has a fake mustache, we have to cultivate a, a more thorough understanding of the medium of film before we pass on from this earth, okay? You have to pick a different comedy. I'll give you just for now, until you, you fake it till you make it for now, just say the Grand Budapest Hotel. Even if you haven't seen it, no one's gonna question it. You know what? They're gonna be like, that is an amazing comedy. You know how you know it's an amazing comedy? It's not that funny. Great movie. It made me chuckle, which is how you know it's a great comedy. If a movie makes you laugh out loud, unfortunately, that's not a comedy. I don't make the rules, okay? What the fuck is G-Max form? <laughs> what is G-Max form? Grass G-Max. Venusaur G-Max. This is exactly what I was looking for. Nice uh, Matt Damon in the last dual haircut ass. Fairy G-Max. Toge Kiss G-Max. G-Max. Snubble G-Max. Tapu Bulu G Max Clefair Clefable G Max. I'm in trouble, guys. Gal okay, can I get a check on uh, on Galar? By the way, what is Galar is sword and shield? Thank you. Wolf. What the fuck is this? Hot B? Look at this guy. He's huge. He takes up all the empty space. If jazz is the notes you don't play, this dude is 0% jazz. Psychic fairy. Psychic grass. Bellossom. That simple... Ex polka, polka fans, explain yourself. Bellossom is made of grass and flowers. And in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, she has a field around her that deflects projectiles. How could that not be psychic? That's Gardevoir? Oh, Balasum puts you to sleep. Okay, not psychic. Obviously, sleeping has nothing to do with your brain. Grass and rock. This must be Torterra. It's a... Are you... This... They need someone to refactor this shit from the ground up. It is a rock with a tree on top of it. How could this not be grass rock? 
Rock fairy doesn't exist. Psychic fairy, Cle Clefa. Who's the other one? Wiggly tough. It's Gen one, it's not gonna be duo type, you idiot. Maybe it has a G-Max form. Grass. <laughs> it's a great thinking exercise. It'll keep your brain nimble, searching the, the corners of the caverns for a data point that probably doesn't even exist in the whole encyclopedia. I have no idea. Um, surely Groudon can learn leaf cutter. Breloom. is a rock mushroom, okay? Apparently that has nothing to do with grass, even though my lawn is fucking covered in fungus. Make it make sense, Satoru Iwata. Fairy rock. Reggie fairy. Like, you know they're washed, right? You know they're washed? What the hell is Grafefe? Grievard. It's a dog with a candle on its head? What the hell is gouging fire? <laughs> it's not even a Pokemon anymore, man. It sounds like the eighth sauce before Sean Evans asked you about some shit from your childhood. Gouging fire? Are you a G-Max form of Gorgeist average? Like, what's go? What are we doing here, man? Gengar G-Max! Is it possible? I am the angry pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> I know he's Gen 1, but when did they add the G-Max, man? Gouging. <laughs> Raging Bolt. Look, what is this dude just got back from the vet? Like, what is this, man? What Roaring Moon. I don't know. Could be psychic for all I know. Oink alone female. Slacking kind of base, though. See, two cannon? They still had something with two cannon, okay? They were still cooking up a little bit. Even Oranguru, they were still doing some funny stuff, okay? Like Walking Wake? What are we talking about here? Kingler G-Max? I'm sorry to say, they went too far, man. I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Kingler G-Max, bro. That's all I got. Okay, Grass Fairy, given enough time, I probably could have gotten this. Credili, I am aware of the existence of, but that's tough for me. And the rest of them, that's just tough, man. That's tough. Wait, Executor is Grass Fairy? Chat's saying it's Grass Psychic. What the hell is tough, right? Oh, you don't know Al Creamy G Max, the cake Pokemon? Come on, bro. It's, this shit annoys the fuck out of me, which is why I love playing it. I think it makes for funny content, as long as you understand kayfabe. But like, Pokemon fans are like, fuck you, man. You haven't even played the Pokemon games post Gen 1, you idiot. Then you go to their Twitter feed and it's all Game Freak. Please fix the game. The last nine games have all been bad. The last good one came out when I was seven years old. Please, I fucking hate you. Please make a good one. Doesn't make any sense, man. Hey, Zimbiji, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Framed, the daily movie guessing game. 
Remember when movies used to be um, lit? They re maybe I'm just getting old. We should take every machine ever built. I understand the irony, okay? We should take every machine ever built uh, and push it into the Grand Canyon and then drop a nuclear bomb on it. We should all move back to towns that have under 10,000 people and there are like two of each business in the town and you should know nobody that lives across state lines. But most importantly, we got to start shooting on film again, okay? How are you going to drop the bomb without machines? That'll be the last machine, okay? We'll get the guy in the plane to drop the bomb. Then he'll eject from the plane so the plane crashes into like the side of Monument Valley. And he'll parachute into the place where he's going to spend the rest of his life. I don't know it yet. 70s, 80s, 90s movie featuring the American Southwest. What is... It's not going to be Bonnie and Clyde, brother. That shit took place in like 1901. Holy! The big chill. Never mind. Ted Danson shooting a rifle. Mel Gibson with a sniper rifle. This has got to be... Lethal Weapon. That's the Gibson hair. Okay. It was either that or the Passion of the Christ. That is not Sylvester Stallone. They did have the same haircut and a similar face. Mel Gibson isn't in The Passion of the Christ. Um, he's in every frame, brother, he directed it. <laughs> His DNA is all over that motherfucker. The Lions are set to play in the NFC Championship game. The longest active streak of not making the conference championship in the NFC then belongs to this franchise. Okay. <clears throat> the NFC know everything about it the NFC could be the Cowboys they won two Super Bowls when I was in the first and the second grade and then have disappointed in the playoffs ever since or what about um, no 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 maybe the Washington Commanders because the last time <clears throat> that the Lions were in the NFC Conference Championship game, didn't they lose to the Commanders? And then the Commanders have been bad my entire life? Yes! Oh, that a little thinking goes a long way. Getting a sports question right on Barstool is like... Because this question is fucking split the atom and this one's going to be like you know, the King James blank. Brock Purdy played for this Big 12 school. I simply don't know. But the Big 12 is the Midwest. I'm going to say that he played for Notre Dame. Iowa State? I didn't even know that that was a school. Notre Dame is independent. You need to realize college football is made up. You say it's famously independent. You need to get a passport. You need to leave uh, the United States of America. Nobody else in the rest of the world knows shit about college football. The fact that I can name... 20 college football teams actually makes me from an international sense the most well-read person on the field of college football outside of the United States of America. Nothing about college football is famous outside of the country where it was birthed and where perhaps one day it may also die. 
that means you can name 20 states. No, it's fucked up because some of them are like a joke. University of Miami? Oh, that's in Florida, right? No, idiot. That's in Ohio. Duh, why didn't you think of that? Doesn't make any damn sense. This left fielder <clears throat> played his career in Seattle, but he made his lone all-star team with the Phillies in 2009. Three hundred and five home runs isn't even that good, to be honest with you. The Phillies, two thousand and nine. Ryan Braun. It's not correct. <laughs> One second. One second. I gotta get some hydration here. Who is it? Raul Ibanez. I did not know. I did not know. That's 20 home runs a year for 15 years. Yeah, didn't Shohei Otani just hit like 112 this year with one arm? This American author made Fahrenheit 451. I hope it's Ray Bradbury. I'm Ethan Bradbury? Okay. That one, I should know it, but I had to, I had to divine it. I'm a little embarrassed that I, that I didn't know it cold. This is Vin Diesel. Of course. And, and Patrick Stewart? And Jeff Bezos, bro, that's Jeff Bezos. No! <laughs> Who is it? Martin Short? Ah, you're so red, it's definitely Martin Short. Yeah, 100%. To boost its breakfast menu, what major fast food chain introduced a coffee infused with Cinnabon flavor in 2015? Burger King. It's Taco Bell. You know what? It sounds like a Taco Bell thing. That makes sense. Jim Carrey was on Kidding, airing on what premium cable channel? Showtime. Just a guess. Which actor took on the role of Voldemort? The goat of all time, Rafe Fiennes from Quiz Show. This American alternative folk band broke out with songs like Ho Hey. That's a... I'm a super cup of day. Ho, I'm a super cup of day. Songs they play in the pharmacy while you're waiting for your prescription to be filled. That must be Mumford and Sons. It is not Mumford and Sons. Apparently, I'm the only motherfucker who didn't know that. This is the Lumineers. That's pretty... I, I, I don't want to make any enemies. I don't like that band. At least I don't like the songs that, I've, that have been elevated to me hearing them in the grocery store. I also... Don't ever want to hear, because people are like, bass, bass, bass. Yeah, but I got to take it in an unbased direction eventually. That's the theme of the show. The show. Um, I hate Mumford & Sons' music just as much. I don't know them as human beings. I don't want to have to assault their character to justify not liking their shitty music. I just, it's my own personal taste. And then here's the one, the third one, we always go one too far for the average person. Please never play... 
Wagon Wheel by the Old Crow Medicine Show in my presence. I promise you I've heard it. I never want to hear it again. I get it. Isn't it cool that this is the kind of song you would have heard in like 1941 in Kentucky? That's great for them. We're moving forward in the 21st century, okay? Come on, it kind of goes. If you love that song, I bet you love the covers. Because so, the, the first one just went a little too hard with the twang on the banjo. I was like, oh, it's like when Dylan went electric. That's kind of where he lost me. Then people started making some covers that kind of like chilled it out a little bit so I could appreciate the music. And that's where I, re I really started to appreciate it. Greta Van Fleet as well. But bro, they sound just like Led Zeppelin, bro. I'm making enemies. Greta Van Fleet isn't a lady. There might be a lady named Greta Van Fleet. Yeah, but you don't like Frank Sinatra though? I, I said what I said, bro. Luck be a lady. To, I, the, you know the same way it sends a chill up your spine when you hear like nerdcore hip hop? That's how I feel whenever someone plays Frank Sinatra in my presence. I'm sorry. It's just that you don't have to agree with me. And you don't have to apply nuance. You can't be like, oh, you, you have the right to be like, I disagree with NL on one thing. Time to find another streamer who's perfect. Okay, but by all means, let me know when your search is complete. But this is where we get into the, the fun weeds of the conversation here is when we disagree and then we find common ground and then we break from common ground and then we come back and then years later you reference the thing that caused the schism in the first place but we laugh about it but there's still some underlying resentment. They're, they still hold it against you a little bit. That's what it's all about, man. You like you too, don't you? Why? You t people throw the baby out with the bathwater with U2. U2 is just Boomer Weezer, okay? They have like a seven or eight year period where everything they made is actually good. Everything afterwards is offensive, but that doesn't take away from the stuff that they made that was actually great, okay? As much as I would like it to, because the cover of Africa is just, it's just too much for me, but... There are no Springsteen, though. There's a gay wedding at the Chicago Rat Hole last week in Harlem late last night. It gets me every time. It's the, the only impression that gets better when I'm sick. <laughs> Together they take a stab at romance and disappear down Flamengo Lane. Sorry, sorry, okay? Lipid. Big asses. <laughs> Sorry, I could. No, it's not Tom Waits. Tom Waits is more like... Uh, I don't think I can do it. Honestly, I, I, I played it forward in my head and I think I would actually rip something in my throat. I think you have to be healthy pretending to be sick to do a good Tom Waits impression. You have to be a little sick to get that Bruce Springsteen sort of smokiness. Lipid big asses. Icon, symbol, legend, glyph, character. Icon, character, symbol, glyph. What are representations? Pictographs. That's what I said. <clears throat> Assess, levy, fine, charge. Things you don't want to read in a letter from the IRS. Big, popular, legend. Hot, in, big, popular. Synonyms for popular. Hippo, legend, lipid, handsome.
things that come after phospho. <laughs> Words beginning with body, oh, words beginning with body parts, handsome, hippo, legend, lipid. I still think that it's um, things that begin with phospho. What about asses? You don't understand connections, no disrespect. A lot of them can apply to multiple categories. That's why it's funny. Listen, take it from somebody who's wrong all the time. You can be wrong without it being somebody else's fault. It can be your fault and you can just say, ah, oh, they got me. It doesn't have to be like a, an error in construction or the fundamental creation of something. Palm door. Me when I'm entering a public bathroom. Get up in the morning. Awaken. Awake. Get down at a wedding. Dance. Break one's silence. Yammer, no longer damp, dry. Enjoyed a fancy meal, dined. High profile film award, Oscar. Like a nerd. Touched for the very first time. <clears throat> what streaming shows often lack compared to network shows. Actors, lighting. A schedule, Jay-Z's genre, rap, a rise, break one's silence, ads, they said often, but sometimes they do have ads, don't they? Reeky. What's gone wrong? <laughs> Something's not right. Dry. Dined. Oscar. Like a nerd. Reeky. <laughs> Geeky. Palm dog? I didn't read the clue. Best canine performance at the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, yeah, that's bullshit. They really fucked up with that one. They, oh, that's so stupid. Why would they do that? I really thought Riki was going to work, man. <clears throat> Kirkland Platinum Performance Ultra Shine Automatic Dishwasher Detergent. Well, it's not automatic, is it? Because I got to put it in the machine in the first place, but whatever. This is... They're going to be 17 cents a pack. We buy this as well. I don't want to flex. We get the Cascade stuff personally. It's got the little detergent bubble in it. 115 packs. No pre-wash re pre -wash required. Cleans 48 hours. Stuck on food. Better fitting size. They've really... Capitalism breeds innovation, folks. I'm going to say this is $16.99. I, I always overshoot. This was a, a lower undershoot, uh, overshoot, so we take those. Holy cow, this is cheap as fuck, bro. $13.99. That is crazy. My first guess before I applied the fudge factor was going to be like $24.99. Way better value than the Cascades. I might have to shop around, man. Capitalism does breed innovation. You know why? Because Cascade is going to see this video and they're going to be like, oh shit, we need to do something to compete. So then they're going to pay the dishwasher manufacturer like a million dollars to print a little label on the inside of the dishwasher that says, please only use Cascade dish detergent in this dishwasher. Why? You don't like fresh ideas like that? That already happens. I know, I got a washing machine. Shit says like works best with Tide detergent. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a machine that 
puts water on top of soap. <laughs> what do you mean works best with Tide detergent? Source, dude, just trust me. Source, image of a crack pipe. We're excited. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? It's bad enough, globalists. It's... <gasps> Is Canada okay? It's bad enough. I bought the Peloton. I pay 60 bucks a month for the tablet to turn on. Paid $15 a month for Disney Plus just so I can watch three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri while I ride. Okay, the, the website is actually broken. The website is actually working. Good movie, though. Some would call it a five-star with a heart, for sure. <sighs> Afghanistan. Not even close. Uh, Tunisia. A little better, closer, warmer. Check ya. It's colder, brother. Not by much, though. Maybe we're looking at a um, North Macedonia. That's warmer, but, but colder than Tunisia. It is. It is, people. What about a Sudan? Warmer still, and I believe them. What about a Togo? Warmer still, my friends, warmer still. What about Mali? It's adjacent to the answer. I was afraid of that. The Gambia? Yeah, okay. Why don't you just tell me the name of the movie you want to see? That's colder is the thing. That's colder. And Togo is closer, so it won't be Senegal. What if I told you that your ass was Benin? We're excited. Scroll, scroll up, please. Scroll up. Um, you are Ghana. That's also adjacent to the answer. Cote d'Ivoire. Yes! <laughs> we get there. We get these. It is always nice. Then you look back at chat and everyone's saying, for Christ's sake, is Burkina Faso. Yeah, why don't you Burkina on that Faso? That's all I got to say about that. Hello, Simvicta. March 8th, 2019. We were so naive back then. Walt Disney opened to $153 million. I mean, this is, this is peak Marvel, but this could also be a Pixar movie. I'm willing to burn five to check. It's an action adventure science fiction. This is Captain Marvel. I remember. I saw it opening night. I did. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie and say I was somewhere else. No, no, I was jerking off. I was jerking off. I didn't go see Captain Marvel the Friday it came out. I remember it was cold. I remember it was the winter time. And I remember I was like, that was pretty good. And I was pretty Marvel-brained at the time. So for me to leave and say it was pretty good is when you work that through the reverse engineering filter, that's like a 4 out of 10. Also, look at the stranglehold that they had on us only five years ago. Captain Marvel opened to $153 million in March. The Marvels made $153 in September. That's crazy.
take me back. Universal, not quite Jurassic World numbers. Starring, oh, this is How to Train Your Dragon 3. The Hidden World. I saw that in theaters too, <laughs> to be honest with you. The uh, uh, friends of ours who may be in the chat, they had, a, uh, they had tickets to see it pre-release. And I said, sure. It's the first time I've ever been to a... Uh, the first and only time I've ever been to one of the theaters where the, um, the chairs recline. It was like a, a cool armchair lounge type theater. I was comfortable. Movie, I don't know. I didn't see the second one, so I was a little bit... I wouldn't say confused. I kind of picked up on the themes and stuff, but I was, I was like, who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is that? I mean, it's a kid's movie, you know? It's not three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Lion's Gate. Second week, 46 million. Pretty good for Lion's Gate, I gotta say. Starring Cassie Davis. We'll be coming back to this one. Warner Brothers... In a month, it's made $100 million, starring Chris Pratt. Warner Brothers. So this is this an animated film? Yes. This is... Could it really be? I feel like any Lego... This would be a Lego movie sequel, but I feel like it would have made more money than this. Or maybe the second one sucked ass or something? I don't know. I honestly have no idea, but you can figure it out. 20th Century Fox, $78 million in a month, starring Rosa Salazar. Tagline, an angel falls, a warrior rises. Christoph Waltz. Ah, lead a battle, angel! Hey! I've heard, when it came out, I heard it was bad. Years went by. I heard it's an underappreciated classic. I have added it to my Disney Plus watch list, but it's going to take a bit for me to get to it. I've got some genuine Oscar winners uh, that, are, that are on the list first. Lion's Gate. Cassie Davis, tagline. She puts the fun in funeral. Happy Death Day. Happy Death Day to you. A joyous... Oh, it's a Medea movie. <laughs> Medea family funeral. Yep. I've seen that one. Have I? No, wait, which... I saw the one where... Um, I think I did see this one. Is this the one where uh, Medea's friend's husband dies while cheating on her? 50th percentile bang on. Um, hello. Yes, that's the one. Every so I've seen six or seven Medea films. They do not the the thing that's most interesting about them is that they do not follow the typical three arc structure. They're very they they're very postmodern in the format that they have, okay? The whole movie is just a series of of skits essentially that almost don't build to anything. And then at the end of the movie, like Five minutes before the credits roll is the climax and there are no consequences to the climax whatsoever and then there's like two more skits at the end. You've kind of got to admire it. Like I remember a Medea family funeral. Hey, by the way, paper mache Mephistopheles, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Like every, every single one that I've seen this one starts with a dude dying, and then it's basically just skits, skits, Medea hits someone else's kids. Boy, you better watch that. I'm going to smack the haller out of you. I'm haller, did I stutter? You know? And then at the end, there's like a funeral for the guy, and everyone weeps. They did not earn the emotional payoff at all. And then at the, his widow is like, okay, I gotta go. And everybody's like, where are you going? And then she's like, this is called a hoe bag. I'm going to, on vacation with my boy toy in Las Vegas. And everyone's like, Irma Gerd, Medea. Like it's, 
In that way, it's very avant-garde. You never know which way they're going to push and pull you in a Medea film. They are remarkable. I would call them art. It's more interesting than fucking the Santa Clauses, I'll tell you that much. You know, Tyler Perry is trying to do something in the movie. He's trying to say something. Whether it hits or not, you know. Jennifer Lawrence, Red Sparrow. Matt Damon, Goodwill Hunting. Tom Hanks, Turner and Hooch. New Jack City, Wesley Snipes. Slobbery Dog. Well, this is Russian ballerina. We know that. Wesley Snipes is in New Jack City. I feel like we got we to gotta do this. We got to go like, yeah. We got to find the connection is a thing. Maybe it's Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, Matt Damon. Jennifer Lawrence, Wesley Snipes, the greatest movie ever made. Wesley Snipes, New Jack City. We should have done it in the opposite direction, but whatever. Okay. New Jack City, Goodwill Hunting, Red Sparrow, Tom Hanks. Jennifer Lawrence, Will, Jack, Tom Hanks. <gasps> Russian ballerina, Will, Jack, Slobbery Dog. I have no idea, bro. I got no idea. I have no clue. Jack Turner will... Jack Turner will. Tom Hanks, Matt Damon better than anything together? It feels like they would cross paths at some point. Wesley Snipes. Will Turner. Will Turner is the name of the dude in the newsroom. <laughs> I think I'm cooked, brother. I, I actually, I don't even have like the first data point to start pulling on. Okay. It's not Matt Damon and Tom Hanks. Anything Matt Damon been in with the slobbery dog? How about Matt Damon, Jennifer Lawrence? I don't think this is going to do it, guys. No, I don't know. So show me the solution. Will Turner Jack. <laughs> Will Turner is not the name of uh, Jeff Daniels' character from the newsroom. It's the name of the pirate from Pirates of the Caribbean. That's stupid. Why would they make it like that? Orlando Bloom. Musical guest. That's a good movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good movie. Pirates of the Caribbean and the first sequel. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Mm, it's, a little, it's a little mid. It's a little mid. I don't like to believe that people can change. My favorite movie? Mm, I'd have to say um, 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 Ratatouille. Ratatouille's pretty good. Rat in the kitchen, poisoning people, giving people the bubonic plague every time it cooks a vichy soie. Good idea. Yeah, really good one. Don't think about the real world consequences of a rat in the damn kitchen. Fuck you. It's a good movie, though. It is a good movie, people. 
But so is three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, okay? Capote, Catching Fire, Doubt, three Philip Seymour Hoffman films, four if you include Mission Impossible 3. Maze Runner, Twilight, Divergent. These are movies based on young adult novels. These are true stories, which means they're probably not going to line up over here. <laughs> That's our connector. Oh, me? Okay, wait, wait, wait. These might just have a... No, it's fine. Man on the Moon is a true story. Silence is also a true story, though. Movies that take place. Movies with Tom Cruise. Movies with Lil Bow Wow. Movies that won Best Picture. What the fuck is Cavalry? <laughs> True stories. Movies that take place not in America. <laughs> Except for Mission Impossible 3. The third movie in the franchise. The third movie in the franchise. Young adult novels. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Movies about the, the clergy. Movies about the clergy. The adult. I don't know what that's there for. Character Priest. Satan's Alley. Three-time Academy Award nominee, Kirk Lazarus. And MTV Movie Award winner for Best Kiss, Tobey Maguire. Hey, Dom Toretto, perfect timing. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. We could do some movie grid. It's about family. Jeffrey Wright, Kate Hudson, Jesse Eisenberg. Jeffrey Wright nominated for an acting Oscar. American Fiction. Released from 2000 to 2024. Let me think about this. Obviously, there's a lot of options. $100 million plus box office run. Lots of motherfuckers are going to forget that this dude is an OG and he was in the Hunger Games Catching Fire. Not that many people forgot about that. <laughs> Turns out everybody remembers that. Okay. That's fine. Well, you got Asteroid City and you've got Casino Royale. I think the kind of nerds who would play this would be more likely to play Asteroid City thinking they're the only people that nerdy when actually they're in the plurality. So Casino Royale stays low. Oh! How about that? He's out of line, but he's right. Kate Hudson nominated for an acting Oscar. It's never happened. Released from 2000 to 2024, Bride Wars. $100 million plus box office run, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. I'm sorry to tell you. I, I could not name another movie she was in that made over $100 million. I also can't tell you what she was nominated for an Oscar for. Maybe it was Bride Wars. Jesse Eisenberg nominated for an acting Oscar. The Social Network. Sorry, I'm too cool to spell things right. <clears throat> My Le Facebook. It bullied people. This was my Oppenheimer. Released 2000 to 2024, The Art of Self-Defense. $100 million plus box office run. <laughs> I'm mad at myself, but I'm playing it. 
Kate Hudson nominated for an acting Oscar, it's got to be the skeleton key. It's not the skeleton key. It is. It is. Almost famous. I should have known that. 99.9%? What's, what's the point one, bro? Or at least everybody... No, I'm reading the graph wrong. <laughs> at least it wasn't a gimme. Is you? No, no, no. This is the percentage of people who got it right that said that movie. What's the right 2000 answer? French Dispatch. That's the most popular. That's just, that is a surprise. We were in the top 30. Ew, don't even look at it. Don't even look at it, bro. Top 31%. Disgusting. Gordon Ramsay in the, a perfectly average restaurant kitchen. Oh! <clears throat> fucking smell it! It's gone off! How long's that been in here? Since the fucking Stone Age? Get it together! Sorry. What is this accent? Is Gordon Ramsay? I don't know, chef. He does, oh, he doesn't fucking know. That's not Gordon, that's Gordon Ramsay. It's Gordon Ramsay when he's a little sick. British people be like, he doesn't sound like that. He's actually from the next county over. Fuck you, man. I'm doing my best, you bully. He's actually from three kilometers down the road. They sound totally different. Australian now? That was an Australian guy who moved to England. Oh, unless you think that they shouldn't be allowed to do that, you motherfucker. Dickhead. <laughs> you know what? Just for that, welcome to Puck Doku, bro. Team Finland, huh? Well, there's only one way this can go. Temu Solani. That one's for you, Helsinki. Sebastian Aho, but the right Sebastian Aho. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe Yussi Jokinen played for Team Finland at some point. Yeah! Why does he look like Bob Dylan at attending Sundance 2003? Anyway, Canucks, I could have played UC Jokinen for that one and then played a Sebastian Ajo up here. Canucks Team Finland. <coughs> we don't tend to draft that many Finnish players. We usually go for the Swedish players. In any international tournament, it doesn't have to be like the world championship. It doesn't have to be the Olympics because we got like... Um, Petri, Petru, Put, Pet, Put, Petrus, Petrus, Palmu. Never played a game in the NHL. <clears throat> we, I can get that. I know I can get that. Ducks and Blues. Ducks and Blue Jackets. Canes and Blues. Doug Waite. Canes and Blue Jackets. That's tough, brother. Blue Jackets and Canucks. Spencer Martin. Not Steve Martin. Spencer Martin, please. Spencer Martin. Thank you. Why is he so far away, bro? Also, why is he Peter Dinklage? They couldn't tell him to get a little bit closer? Like, he's, he's going to look at the yearbook. He's going to feel weird. Blues and Canucks, Pavel Dimitra. Canucks, Finland. It actually should be easy. 
easier. Should be easier. Only you a levy. Ooh! He doesn't know his own team? Bro, the Canucks only draft Swedes. You know, we're the only team in the NHL. We had, like, the game before last, we had one Canadian player. Technically, we had two, but one of them was injured. We literally have 19 dudes from Malmo. And they're in second place in the NHL right now. The Swedes won, bro. They won. He is kind of giving slay, isn't he? I just don't know anybody who's ever played for your team except Rick Nash and Lubomir. Lubomir Viznovsky, bro! No! Really? He never played for the Ducks? I thought that was a gimme. Jay Baumeister. Petrangelo, Alex Pet Petrangelo. The other one. What's the Shaddenkirk? <laughs> Kevin Shaddenkirk. The other defenseman who was good for like three years. Hemomansa. Hmm. Sergey Vedorov, Maximum Domi, of course. Yeah, yeah. Average score seven point two, of course. Of course, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, no, these are all fair. These are these zero percents are all fair. Jack Skilly, Canucks legend, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all get a job. Honestly, get a job. Lycanthrope. I know Sammy Sallow. He's most famous for getting nutshot, right? Saw service. Gets me every time. Works every time. Pixie. You should go back to just quoting stuff. Mage. Salt burn to prisoners. Yeah, okay. This shouldn't be that hard. I'm thinking in my head right now. That, no, 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 I've, I've made the connection as we speak. I've made the connection. Rosamund Pike to Gone Girl to David Fincher to Zodiac to Jake Gyllenhaal to Prisoners. Eat me. Rosamund Pike. Gone Girl. David Fincher. You can't use directors in movie to movie. Where was I going with this? I was going David Fincher to Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you're going to go Tyler Perry to Medea Witness Protection to Eugene Levy. Then from Eugene Levy, I would think for me personally... I guess I would just go American Pie. Probably the first one. And then I would play um, Thomas Ian Nicholas, which then lets you go back to 10 Things I Hate About You. Which then lets you go back to Rookie of the Year. From Rookie of the Year, it gets pretty easy. You go Gary Busey, Point Break, Keanu Reeves, from Keanu Reeves. Thy Keanu Reeves story. Keanu Reeves messy pop. Um, you'll be taking this to John Wick chapter four, which takes you to motherfucker, which takes you to Keanu Reeves, which takes you to John Wick chapter one, which takes you to Willem Dafoe. She takes you to Spider-Man. No Way Home. 
which takes you to Tom Holland, which takes you to Spider-Man Far From Home, which takes you to Jake Gyllenhaal, which takes you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I embarrass myself with a number of different debasements there. Use two Marvel movies. But hey, if they... If they had just let me use David Fincher, it wouldn't have been a problem, bro. American Animals. They made a movie about golden retrievers? Oh, it must be uh, uh, Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound. Res. Metacritic score 89. It's not res. Could you zoom in a little further? Like, I feel like I can almost see more than one pixel. PlayStation 1. Wipeout. This is Wipeout 2. Franchise. Wipeout. Genre. Racing. Wipeout. Original release, 1999, okay. Wipeout 3. Amazing, wow, so good. <laughs> they should make it so if you guess the franchise right, you just get it right, come on. Do you really need, they made 17 Wipeout games in three years, they all look exactly the same. What are we, what are we proving here? They were great. You didn't fucking own them, you liar. This is the kind of shit you, it gets 10 out of 10 in Nintendo power and you're like, I didn't read all that. I'm gonna go buy Donkey Kong 64. Then for like the next 30 years of your life, you're like, hey, put some respect on Wipeout's name. You and me are the reason they ain't making that shit anymore, bro. I played them at my friend's house. That's stealing. I believe people deserve to be compensated for their work. Sorry. Shut up. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you got me. You, you cooked me with that one. This is smite, bro. What? This, this shit is smite, my dude. I don't know what to tell you. you. Your database is incorrect. I'm not guessing out of, out of spite for smite. It's fucking, fucking vampire survivors. It's not even the right platform, bro. Gauntlet is a gauntlet. Heroes of New Earth. Oh, of course, my bad. It's Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous from 2021. My mistake. Try, you could be mad at me for skipping. Um, we were not going to ever get Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous because it was invented by ChatGPT. You were hidden skip? I don't know the game. I simply don't know the game. I, was, it, I could have skipped a thousand times. I was never going to get the right answer. It's a good game. Oh, you bought it on sale, which is only slightly better than stealing it in the first place. You're the reason they're not making that stuff anymore. This dude is stanced up. This is Klonoa too. This is Spyro the Dragon! Spyro the Dragon! Finally, some good freaking games, bro. Now this one, this one I owned.
Oh no, here we go. Bought it used. No, I waited till it became a greatest hit. Spyro, I'm going to do Wrath of the Dragon. It's newer than the year 2000. It may be third person and first person. That's, it, it leaves only one option. PUBG, that's a very important green. Um, it's newer than 2017. It's a shooter plus other stuff. Perhaps it could be the game known as Deathloop. It's older than 2021, and it has none first person. Hi, Tomo. 2020 to 2018. So two, it's 18, 19, or 20. Of course. It is on this multi-platform on the previous generation. There's only one option. It's Elden Ring, which is definitely on the PlayStation 5. It's Docs. It's Sekiro. Shadows die twice. Oh, how delightful. Some greens. 2019, third person. A little game called Days... That's not multi-platform. A little game called... Hemomancer. A little game by the name of... Gotham. A little game... A little game by the name of uh, motherfucking Warhammer Vermintide 2. Probably... Uh, you know what? I'm just sick of you. Give me my clue. It's a role-playing shooter adventure. It's a little game by the name of Remnant from the Ashes. <sighs> I had no second guess, bro. The first guess was perfect. It's really not uh, like Vermintide. It's Vermintide. Vermintide, Vermintide, Vermintide. It's one of those wave-based shooters. It's Advance Wars. Advance Wars. Say it's Advance Wars. They won't even let me kill myself. Probably Adventure Island. Anthem! Oh, this is the Anthem. Put your damn hands up. Oh, brother. The streak was nice while it lasted. You're right, it started with an A. I could have gotten there randomly. How did Anthem only come out four years ago? It's crazy, man. Life comes at you fast. The years start coming and they don't stop coming. You got no post-launch support, Anthem? It's not your fault? Yeah, it only has seven years of development. Maybe if they just cooked it for like a, three extra years after it came out, it could have been good one day. Worked for Duke Nukem forever. 2019 two-word comedy drama. Marriage Story. A particularly articulate piece of filmmaking, it beautifully captures the sense of alienation of a child of two cultures. The creator. The kid is like, am I a human? Am I a robot? I don't know. Nirmata, help me. Help me. This movie is called... I don't know. This movie is called Rice Boy Sleeps. No, nope, they don't have it. They don't have it. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't have the best Canadian movie of 2023. Okay. Excuse me? Excuse me, I can't see the clue. Excuse, excuse me, I can't see the clue, bro. Let me type in shit until there's no matches. Uh, POV, you are a... 22-year-old viewer who just saw me make a joke. 
<laughs> in just 100 minutes of screen time, Wang has brought a contentious ethical issue to a human level and wrapped it with hearts. I, I don't know. Aquafina, I know it. I do know what you're talking about. It's the farewell. I typed the, so it takes like a minute and a half for it to actually, there we go. The farewell, so fresh and so clean. The, the, the today, Junior, I know. It's, you're not wrong. Today, I'd like to go from Monaco to Finland. Nope, okay, that's the old one. Today, I'd like to go from Uzbekistan to Vatican City. You will be traveling to Italy. Surely, your ass must go through Russia and then come down. But that is annoying because I'm like, can you go like Italy? <laughs> Here's what my ass thinks could work. Italy, France, United Kingdom, anywhere that touches the Atlantic Ocean or the North Sea. So Russia, <laughs> Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Wait, let's work backwards. Kazakhstan, Russia. Now I really feel like the connection is Finland. Unless you can use the Oblast, because if your ass can use the Oblast, you can skip Finland altogether, in which case you can go Poland. Oh, shut the fuck up, man. And you can go Austria. Can I, sorry, I got to, to, this is not how Italy looks in my brain. I got to tilt my head at a 900,000 degree angle here. Maybe this is how it looks. That is Czechia. Okay, so now I'm pissed because we're connected. Because th this shit should not glow if it's not connected, bro. That Why is this glowing if this part's not connected? Oh, you can rotate. Look at that. Okay. Well, no, you can't. That just takes you back to the normal. Okay. All right. I understand. I understand it's no big deal. Well, in that case, why don't you take my ass to Lithuania? Really? Hi, Tomo. How about Belarus? There we go. It's bullshit anyway, because you should be able to connect through the motherfucking, the exclave. It doesn't make any sense. You have to be able to walk. Then explain to me how the United Kingdom borders France in travel. The tunnel? You can't walk through the tunnel, bro. You'll die of carbon monoxide poisoning. There's no ventilation down there. There is? I didn't fucking know that when I said that shit, okay? They have specific rules on the page. They should, you know you fucking bootlickers? They should change the rules to make more sense. That exclave is part of Russia. Why wouldn't it count as a valid connection? It's like if you were playing like US Connections and you did like Michigan, but then you played Wisconsin and you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Technically, um, we were, oh, the, only the Lower Peninsula counts if you connect to Michigan via the Lower Peninsula. If you want to connect via the Upper Peninsula, you have to start from the Upper Peninsula. It makes no sense. 
Just make, if the country borders contains that, then just use it. You are just, you, you, you fucking, I thought you guys wanted to be revolutionaries. I thought you wanted to overthrow the system. Here you are reading the rule book. In the rule book, it says that exclaves don't count. Okay, your honor, fucking why? What reasoning could we possibly have for this? If the rule doesn't make sense, you have a moral prerogative to rail against it. Because they made the game. POV, you are American. It's your house, your rules. I just want everybody to get along, okay? POV, you think that you own the road outside of your house and when someone else parks on it, you slash their tires. You don't own the road outside of the house, okay? The city owns the road outside of the house. So why don't they shovel it? I don't know, okay? I'm a, I'm a victim of the system just like you. Who owns the city? Concord Pacific. If you're talking about the city I live in. Concord Pacific, Bosa Properties. The condo guy, what's his name? Tom Rennie, the condo guy. Um, Lee Kashing definitely owns uh, probably like 35% of it, if I had to guess. Chip Wilson. Chip Wilson owns, he owns the most expensive house. That's true. Ken Sim. Don't flatter him, okay? He owns Rosemary Rock Salt. It's not even the best bagel place in the city. People only go to Rosemary Rock Salt because you can't go to Sully's Bagelry anymore because the lady who owns it is always yelling at her employees. Otherwise, that place would be clearing Rosemary Rock Salt any day of the damn week. Okay, slash marker me.